All right, how's it going, Neil? So today, we are going to be talking about the difference between two really common protocols used for virtualization and other really low latency network applications, NFS and iSCSI. And while they are incredibly similar in what they do and when they're used and how they're used, they're actually completely opposite protocols. NFS is file-based and iSCSI is block-based. And those are two things that are about as different as they can be when it comes to file protocols. All right, so first off, what are these two protocols, NFS and iSCSI? Both NFS and iSCSI are protocols that let a file server basically share out data in one way, shape, or form to another device. In general, when you're talking about these two protocols, you're either gonna be talking about virtual machines or other high latency sensitive applications, stuff that needs a ton of performance. You're not really going to be mounting either one of these to your computer because you just don't need it. SMB is a much better option for that. And so for people who are looking for like a desktop application that's actually connecting to a NAS from their computer and regular devices that are not servers needing crazy IOPS and very specific configurations, do SMB. I've got a link down in the description below that kind of covers why that is and the difference between SMB as well as the rest of these protocols. But for most people, SMB is going to make the most amount of sense. But for those people who are deploying servers, and in most cases, it's virtual machines. NFS and iSCSI are by far the two most common options for virtual machine storage and just bulk file storage in general. So what they do is they take a bunch of hard drives that are stored in NAS, and they expose it to either a virtual machine or a virtual machine host that exposes it as a hard drive. And that is really what we're gonna be focusing on today. And there is a huge difference between them because NFS is file-based. That means that the actual file server understands the file system and controls all of that. Whereas iSCSI is an entirely separate thing called block-based storage. When you're using iSCSI, the actual NAS has no clue what you're storing on there. It could be a completely empty disk, it could be a disk of media, it could be some foreign file system that it's never seen before. And the NAS has no clue. All the NAS does when it's exposing an iSCSI LUN is exposes ones and zeros, a brick of a hard drive, and that's it. With NFS, it's not doing that. It's actually sending over the files. So it is seeing the exact same file system as the virtual machine does. And that is a huge difference. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of these protocols. Let's go ahead and kind of see how they're deployed. And NFS is deployed pretty simply. On a Synology, and the same steps really exist on TrueNAS as well, you go into your file services, NFS, enable it, and that's pretty much it. Now, under your shared folders, you can just go ahead and start adding in NFS permissions here and basically saying, hey, this IP address is allowed to access this share in this way. It's honestly very simple and you don't need any customization to it. It is very Linux based. So if you're going to a Linux server, NFS is very, very, very easy to set up, but you do need a storage network. NFS does not have its own authentication other than IPs based authentication. That means if you've got a virtual machine host and somebody else on there, that virtual machine might be able to say, hey, I'm actually the IP address of that virtual machine host. Let me see all those hard drives. And if you didn't have it on an isolated VLAN, your file server would actually just kind of do that, assuming they were able to mask the IP address properly. So that's one of the main downsides of NFS is it is really, really, really trusting and there's no authentication other than IP-based authentication. I cover this all in another tutorial where I actually show how to deploy an NFS server for virtualization. I'll leave a link down in the description below to that and it really covers that stuff a lot more in depth. But assuming you have your own storage VLAN, NFS is very secure and everybody can just access these hard drives and have really low latency connections to them. And when that happens, you also see the files. So the actual Synology itself in this case sees the files and that is really useful for a few things. One, if you need to restore from like a snapshot or a backup, a copy and paste works. You can just delete the old disk, copy and paste the new disk in there and boom, it's restored. There's a lot of other things like that on the caching level as well 
that because the NAS understands that this is a file system and that you're probably going to need the rest of that file when you've asked for the first part of it, it allows the cache to be a lot more intelligent, especially when you're looking at ZFS. So this is how NFS works. It's very simple and it actually has the ability to cross protocol mount with SMB, which in this case is not really necessary, but it can be useful in specific instances. Now let's say we want to use iSCSI. And iSCSI, as I said, is an entirely different beast. It is not file storage, it's block st storage. So to do that, we're gonna open up an app called SAN Manager, which most people have probably never opened up and used. So a SAN stands for a storage area network. When you're dealing with a SAN, all that is actually exposed is a brick of data. While that works well for virtualization where all the machines are talking to each other, if you were to have maybe two VMs, they would not be able to open up the same disk. They would not be able to both read the contents of it because that's the equivalent of having two hard drives plugged into the same computer at the same time. Both of them could be overriding each other's things without really even knowing about it. So if you're looking for like shared assets, this is just not that because only one person can have an actual LUN, which is a storage box, opened up at the same time. That is, unless you've got a orchestration where multiple sh machines understand each other and can talk to each other, like you do when you have virtualization. So when we come in here, we can see that we can create what's called a LUN. And a LUN is that virtual hard drive. We can create it either thin provisioned or thick provisioned. Thin provisioning means that it basically grows with your data. So if you're only using 5% of it, it's not gonna take up all the space. Whereas thick provisioned means that it has taken the entire chunk of data, which gives you better performance, but takes up way more space. So with LUNs, we have to allocate our storage at time of creation. That's because once this NAS hands off this virtual disk, it's up to whatever is on the back end of it. And so we can't just live increase more space like you can with NFS, because if you did, well, the actual device hooking up to this iSCSI LUN would have no idea what to do with that extra space or that extra space even exists because it's managing its own file system. So if I say it's 10 gigabytes, the only way to increase it is to shut everything down, increase it, and then let the device go ahead and expand the file system. So we're gonna go ahead and do thick provision 10 gigabytes just for fun. And then you also have what's called an iSCSI target. And that is essentially what's going to manage the iSCSI LUN. And some basic permissions that we can go ahead and go in more depth here. Okay, so now that we've got our iSCSI target, we can also go ahead and create a new host. And the way we're gonna do this is actually in combination with our virtual machines. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. Okay, so this right here is my Zen Orchestra, which is what runs all my virtual machines. And this is what we're gonna use really quick to add a new iSCSI initiator. Okay, so now the way this ends up working is the host and the client kind of find each other. They both can discover each other. You can actually manually create each on either side first but it's way easier to just let iSCSI kind of discover each other. And then from there, you can set everything. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start on the client side and we're going to go ahead and just choose our host and call it. And we're gonna start our iSCSI. And now we're gonna go ahead and plug in the IP address of the server we've got right here, which is 116 and hit find. So then we can see there's this exact same storage target right here that we have just created. And so we're gonna select it. And now we're going to need to come back to our actual host over here and create it. So you can see that our Synology has now discovered the server right here and we're gonna hit create. And automatically add it on in. And this is where you get the permission. So now they are linked. And so what we should be able to do is boom, we can see all the drives we have access to here. And we'll just let them initialize in chat.
we can see on the Synology side, we can see it is now connected. Now we just hit create. Oh. So now it's going to reach out and create that entire brick of space that's going to be allocated to this device. Okay, so now I've got my iSCSI storage line in here. And it is going to act really similar to my NFS disk. But the thing is, my NAS has no clue what's stored on here. That's because it is just an iSCSI line. It's just a hard drive. The most information we get about it is this right here. I switched it back to thin provisioning so you can see how much space we've used. But we just simply do not have any way of knowing what files are in here or how they're stored. And the reason that that matters is things like replications and backups and snapshots are not nearly as effective. If we want to roll back an NFS data store with a snapshot, what we can actually do is actually just roll back that one folder or that one file or copy it off somewhere else without having to understand all these things in here. That's because when you're using NFS, you're dealing with files. So I hope that kind of helps understand the difference between iSCSI and NFS. NFS has files really simple that you're used to working with, whereas iSCSI, it's really just like a hard drive, but a hard drive that can be shared between multiple computers if the server allows it. So in this case, I actually have multiple virtual machine hosts. That's because I actually have the ability to have a cluster on my XCPNG servers. And so it's actually intelligent enough to have both of these drives plugged in at the same time. And so it's able to handle it because it's a cluster and it knows who's got which part of which disk active at a time. But with a regular iSCSI LUN, it's not like you could have two Windows computers pulling files off of it at the same time. Now that we kind of understand what NFS and iSCSI are, let's talk about when to use which. And I'll be completely honest with you, if you're looking at virtualization, you can't really go wrong. It's really up to you on what you would prefer to do rather than anything else. If we're focusing on performance, both iSCSI and NFS sometimes outplay each other. Sometimes they perform better than the other one. In general, if we're looking at purely random reads, I think in general iSCSI does perform better, but there are so many cases and it's not like it's twice as fast or anything like that. It's all generally lost in the noise and sometimes iSCSI is faster, sometimes NFS is faster and it really depends on what you need. If you're looking for like super high IOP specific workflows with like databases and you don't care about any kind of copy on write features or replications or things like that, then I do think iSCSI does perform better, but is it necessary? The other thing that iSCSI does have is a thing called multi-pathing. iSCSI can actually use multiple network connections at the exact same time and do a thing called multi-pathing where it will actually be able to use two 10 gigabit connections to another server that has two 10 gigabit connections and actually be able to load balance the traffic in between the two of them. And so that's what makes iSCSI really powerful, is you have those capabilities and those features. Another thing that iSCSI has is really easy out of the box authentication. And so you can enable CHAP right here and it will allow you to basically create a username and password that both of them have to agree on, both your server and your client have to agree on to be able to talk to each other. And the reason that's so powerful is, compared to NFS, you just don't have that. NFS, you don't have the ability to just say, oh, hey, I'm going to require a username and password, and so if somebody IP spoofs, I'll catch it. You really just can't do that, and so iSCSI has a lot more protections built in out of the box than NFS does, because you're not doing NFS Kerberos. So while that is absolutely true, both of them generally want to be run on what's called a dedicated storage network. And generally the way you assign that is you reserve a network interface for both machines that are on the same VLAN. And so that way all the traffic, it's got a really fast connection to your NAS. That way, if somebody's downloading a lot of large files and doing some stuff that's taking up a lot of network bottleneck, 
it's not slowing down the back end data storage. It's not getting in the way of your file servers. And so either way, in most cases, you're probably deploying these on a dedicated VLAN, but having that extra permission is quite nice. Okay, so performance wise, if you're not somebody who is really using iSCSI multipathing, so you're somebody who's not super concerned with saturating one network connection worth of bandwidth, so if you've got a 10 gigabit connection, you're probably not hitting enough virtual machine data to use that unless you've got a very fast server. So if you're not worried about that, the performance between NFS and iSCSI tend to be not that far off each other. And so really the end option is which should you use is whatever makes sense to you. If you're familiar with iSCSI and you understand the limitations when it comes to allocating space and setting up LUNs and things like that, iSCSI is very powerful. And there's a lot of great options on there and you can use this to add on a lot of hosts. But for me, I end up choosing NFS most time because it is just more efficient for what I'm doing. The compression is gonna be more efficient because we're talking about file-based stuff rather than arbitrary block-based things. And the ability to roll back files and be able to see how a data store was two hours ago rather than having to actually restore it and then figure it out is really valuable to me. But at the end of the day, it's whatever makes sense to you. It's funny, both of them do almost entirely different things. File-based storage and block-based storage in a lot of ways could not be more different, but they end up having remarkably similar performance and neither one of them is something you're gonna go wrong with. So finally, to answer the question, should you use NFS or iSCSI for your virtual machine storage? It really depends. If you're working on Windows, you're not gonna to wanna to mess around with NFS. You're gonna go straight into iSCSI. So let's just get that out of the way. If you're using Windows Hyper-V, you're gonna use iSCSI. That's because it does not have a very good NFS client. But if you're using anything Linux-based, try both of them out and see. For me, I really liked the ability that NFS gives me and it just works really simply. But especially if you're somebody who's looking to scale out massively, iSCSI does have that capability and can do a lot of things. So what I would suggest doing is trying them both out and seeing and it's whatever you're gonna end up more comfortable with because you're not gonna to have to worry one way or the other with performance in most cases. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this overview. If you have any other questions, leave those down in the comments below. And if you wanna hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. All right, have a good one, bye.